Hello, hello, Magic English 8 here. I hope you're doing great and watching my video clips. I hope you're improving your English proficiency. Today I am with you with another unit of Interchange, the blue book. Very beautiful and good for intermediate and advanced students. My book is fifth edition, but you can use any other edition. So, Units 1, 2, 3, and 4 I have already taught and today I am teaching you unit 5 of the book titled Hit the Road. Okay, so today we are going to talk about trips in travel as the title suggests because hit the road means start a journey, travel, or trip. So let's go to the word file and see what we have here. At a glance. Unit 5, hit the road, and main areas covered today are describing vacation plans, giving travel advice, planning a vacation, and in the grammar part we have two things to talk about today. One of them is future with will and be going to, and the other one is models of necessity and models of suggestion, which are these things you see here, okay? In the grammar part, I will talk about them with you. So, let's start with the snapshot on our book. What do you like to do on vacation? So, vacation is the time that you're away from work. Vacation is your time that you spend usually for going out, doing something, or having fun. Here, four options for vacation. Take a fun trip, discover something new, stay home, or enjoy nature. These are the common things people usually like to do on their vacation. Now, there are some options here. My suggestion, you pause the video here and read these options for yourself in order to practice your reading as well. But I will read them for you. Visit a foreign country. Travel in my own country. Go to a music festival. Take a photography course. Take a course. Take a course. Take a photography course. Take an English course. Take a music course. Hang out with friends, going out with friends, spending time with friends. Host a family reunion. Host a family reunion. So, union together, reunion, coming back together. Host as a verb here. Host a family reunion means you want to be the host of gathering all family members together. For example, your siblings from Europe, your parents are in Asia, you are in America, so you gather all the family members together. That is called a family reunion. Go camping. You know that go comes with activities ending in ing. Go camping, go swimming, go walking, or anything else like that, and relax at the beach. Okay? So, my question for you is this. Which of these activities do you like to do on a vacation? Please pause the video and give your own answer. For example, a sample response for that could be, for example, I would like to visit a foreign country. This way I can explore foreign cultures and see different new things that I haven't seen in my own country. This way I can both enjoy and learn something. A sample response or somebody says I would like to hang out with my friends because we share a lot in common and time spent with my f uh, friends is usually unbelievably beautiful so I prefer to spend my time with my friends or anything else okay this can be good for your speaking so please pause the video and give your own answers but here as extra speaking practice i have some questions and some answers for you which activities would you like to do on your next vacation mm -hmm. right now even you can pause the video and give an answer to this question to develop your speaking but my answer to this part i seek to explore a foreign country on my next vacation embracing a new culture and language okay Eager for local cuisine, which means culinary, food. 
I plan to engage with locals, local people, through language classes and cultural events, exploring historical landmarks and natural attractions is a priority, is something I would like to do first. Deepening my understanding of the country's history and geography. Very beautiful. Deep, adjective, deepen the verb. Deepening my understanding of. I like it very much. Transfer it to your vocab vocabulary notebook. Deepening my understanding of the country's history and geography. Ultimately, do you ever use it? Ultimately. Instead of saying and, instead of saying finally. Ultimately, I aim to broaden my horizons and create lasting memories in a new and exciting destination. Very beautiful. Broaden my horizons to understand more, to see more, to experience more. Create a lasting memory create a lasting memory or here plural create lasting memories beautiful beautiful okay so this is a beautiful sample response you can transfer the beautiful parts into your vocabulary notebook and use that okay and there's another question here we got make a list of other activities you'd like to do on vacation so here, I have prepared something for you, a very long list. Why? Because I know lots of people viewing these videos are candidates of IELTS or TOEFL exams. So here, you can have a list of all the items that could be useful in your speaking. So uh, I try to keep the explanations short, but the list gives you a lot of ideas. Other activities you like to do on a vacation? Traveling to new destinations. Exploring new cities or countries. Outdoor adventures like hiking, camping or water sports. Music festivals or concerts. Attending live music events. Please don't say attend to. Attend without any preposition. Attending live music or concerts. Beach activities. Swimming, sunbathing, or playing beach sports. You see, all of these are giving you vocabulary in a classified fashion. Cultural experiences. Visiting museums, art galleries, or historical sites. Site here means places. Food exploration. Trying local cuisine. So by this time, I guess you have learned cuisine. Cuisine means food, eating things. And dining at interesting restaurants. Shopping. Someone might like shopping. Shopping. Exploring local markets or shopping districts. Socializing. Meeting new people. Making friends make friends and attending social events so attend doesn't have any preposition photography capturing memories and documenting the vacation like this student of mine her name is gohar which means a gem or diamond and she's a photographer i know <clears throat> she likes photography and she likes to capture memories okay so this is about photography, relaxation, spa days, reading on the beach, or lounging by the pool. Lounging by the pool. So, what is lounge? Lounge means relax, spend time leisurely somewhere. Let's take a look at Long Man, our beautiful dictionary. Lounge. Lounge as a verb. It says, <clears throat> stand, sit, or lie in a lazy or relaxed way. So, you want to relax somewhere. It is lounge. Mm -hmm. Like this example, you see? Nathan was lounging on the grass bank outside the cottage. So, uh, lounging on the grass bank outside the cottage. Really you're relaxing in lazy fashion so lounging by the pool 
adrenaline activities, bungee jumping, beautiful, skydiving, or other thrill-seeking adventures, thrill-seeking adventures. Sports, playing or watching sports like beach volleyball, soccer, or surfing. Road trips, exploring different places by car with friends, lovely, lovely. Gaming, playing video games or participating in gaming tournaments, good. Fitness activities, yoga, running, or fitness classes. Concerts or live shows. Enjoying performances by favorite bands or artists. Educational pursuit. Pursuit means, as a verb means, follow. But here means interest. Educational pursuit, educational interest. Taking workshops, language classes, or learning new skills. And nature exploration, visiting national parks, botanical gardens, or nature reserves finished yes so why did i prepare this long list for you because i want to teach you how to organize your mind into different categories and how to put your vocabulary into different categories this way you will memorize them far better okay so this was part one snapshot we talked about vacation we talked about things to do on a vacation and lots and lots of vocabulary what to do for you please transfer these vocabulary items into your vocab notebook okay good let's move to exercise two i guess i'll just stay home a look at this picture you should be able to tell me something. Please don't look at the conversation. What do you see in the picture? Who are these people? What do you think their relationship is? What do you think they're going to talk about in this conversation based on this title? So this is your time to pause the video and leave your guesses. For example, some guesses could be like this. I think they must be close friends because they are giving a high five to each other and they are smiling at something. Looks like there is something interesting they want to do together and they have uh, reached a conclusion about that. That's why they say, give me a high five. So this is my guess, okay? You can give your own guesses as well. But let's listen to this conversation without looking at the text. And here I prepared some questions for you. There is two girls here named Lily and Nora. And as you see, Nora, Lily. The questions are these. What is Lily going to do? What's Nora going to do? What sport is Nora going to participate? And what does Nora and why does what does Nora invite Lily to do? Okay? Just tell you something. The first girl talking is Nora. Okay? The first girl is Nora. Ready to listen? Please. Unit 5. Hit the road. Page 30. Exercise 2. Conversation. I guess I'll just stay home. Part A. Listen and practice. The first girl is Nora. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with some friends and watch my favorite series. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to snorkel, so maybe we'll go snorkeling one day. Sounds like fun. Hey, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. Good. So what about your answers to the questions? <laughs> uh, the points that I made here for number one, she said she would stay home. She's not sure. Nora, she's going to relax at the beach. What about the sport? 
surfing and the last one invites her to join them right okay so this was our pre-listening questions now let's go to the reading look at it and listen to it another time okay hit the rotation i guess i'll i'm so excited we have two weeks off what are you gonna do i'm not sure i guess i'll just stay home maybe i'll hang out with some friends and watch my favorite series what about you any plans yeah i'm gonna relax at the beach with my cousin we're gonna go surfing every day and my cousin likes to snorkel so maybe we'll go snorkeling one day sounds like fun hey why don't you come with us do you mean it i'd love to i'll bring my surfboard that's great the more the merrier okay very good so our guesses about those questions were correct now uh kind of you understood what these two girls are talking about mm -hmm. about their next pl vacation plans one more time we need to listen to it i tell you about some points in it okay unit two, part a listen and practice i'm so excited we have two weeks off what do you so we have two weeks off what are you gonna do what are you gonna do what are you gonna do so we know that gun is used for plans i'm not sure i guess i'll just stay home maybe i'll hang out with some friends and watch my favorite series so what is the conversation telling us the point is that lily does not have any fixed plans for her future for her upcoming two weeks off that is the point we get here why because she says i guess i'll just stay home maybe i'll hang out it shows that she doesn't have any fixed plans but what about nora what about you any plans yeah i'm gonna relax at the beach with my cousin so that's why she says i'm gonna because she's got plans that's why lily uses will because she doesn't have any plans we're gonna go surfing every day we're gonna go surfing so they have talked about it probably they are taking some surfing gear for that and my cousin likes to snorkel so maybe we'll go snorkeling one day so about surfing they have planned they have decided but about snorkeling maybe we'll go snorkeling so about that one they haven't planned sounds like fun hey why don't you come with us why don't you come with us do you mean it i do you mean it really do you mean it means really seriously i'd love to i'll bring my surfboard i'll bring my surfboard i'll bring my surfboard so at the time of a quick decision the time that quickly you make a decision it comes with will and not with be going to i will talk about will and be going to in the grammar part but quick decisions come with will for example someone is knocking at the door i say i'll get the door not i'm going to get i'll get the door because it's a sudden and quick decision that's great the more the merrier the more the merrier what does that mean the more the merrier an idiom meaning the more we are the happier it will be the more the merrier the more the merrier sometimes i ask you how much money do you want and you say the more the merrier the more the merrier so the more money you give me the better it will be the more the merrier okay that was part a of the conversation now part b listen to the rest of the conversation what are they where are they going to stay how will they get there two questions where how listen please page 13 track 
40. Page 30, Exercise 2, Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. Where are they going to stay? How will they get there? By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, there's a small hotel near the beach where we can stay. I stayed there last year, and it's very nice, clean, and not too expensive. Do you think they still have vacancies? They probably have at least one room available. We can share a room and save some money. Sounds good. And when are we going to go? There is a bus that leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning. Is that too early for you? That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Okay, got it. Please pause the video and give a summary of this part because the questions were not very difficult. Where are they going to stay? At a hotel. How are they going to get there? By bus. So my recommendation, pause the video and give a short summary on that. But we can listen to the part one more time and after that you give your summary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen to the get there. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, there's a small hotel near the beach where we can stay. I stayed there last year and it's very nice, clean and not too expensive. Mm -hmm. So, a nice, clean and not too expensive hotel by the beach. Do you think they still have vacancies? Do you think they still have vacancies? And by vacancies, she means empty rooms. They probably have at least one room available. We can share a room and save some money. We can share a room and save some money. Sounds good. And when are we going to go? There is a bus that leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning. So a bus leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning? Is that too early for you? That's fine with me. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Too excited to sleep means... I am very excited that I cannot sleep. So, to adjective to means very much that I cannot. For example, I say, this coffee is too hot to drink. It is very hot that I cannot drink it. Okay, you got it? Now, it's the time for you to give a short summary of this part. Your summary, pause the video and say, my summary. The two girls have decided to go and stay in a hotel by the beach. It's a nice clean and pla clean place, which is not very expensive. And uh, they're going to share their room in order to save some money. And as for transportation, they're going to take a bus leaving at 6 a.m. The girl is too excited to sleep. Okay, so this was uh, the conversation some grammar practice here and some speaking that we had okay let's move to exercise three and grammar focus talking about future with be going to and with will so far you know that will comes for the time that you do not have any special plans and be going to comes for the time that you have some plans. You have decided about the future, yeah? As the book here is talking about that. The sentences say, what are you going to do? I'm going to relax at the beach. It means I got plans for that. Or we're going to go surfing every day. Plans for that. Or I'm not going to do anything special. It means I have decided not to do anything special. So, there is plans for all of them. With will, what are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess. So, some of the clues here for will are guess, maybe, I think, probably. All of these are clues for the time that you do not have any plans. So, use will. I guess I will I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll take a course. I don't know. I think I'll go camping. And I probably won't go anywhere. So I haven't decided about that. You got it? Good. I have some points for you here. Future. 
be going to and will, we use be going to plus verb to talk about plans that we have decided on. Will plus verb to talk about future unplanned actions or about guesses. And as I told you, it is also used for quick decisions. Extra speaking, so put it for later. And now let's do this part. Put will or be going to. Let's do it together. Have you made any vacation plans? Well, I've decided on one thing. I, I've decided means I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a bike tour. That's great. For how long? I'm gonna be away for about a week. I need to take some time off. So all of these show that the person has decided about that. So when are you leaving? I'm not sure. So we will. I will probably leave around the end of the month. And where are you gonna go? I haven't thought about that yet. I guess I will go down south. That sounds like fun. Are you gonna buy are you gonna buy a new bicycle? I'm not sure. Actually, I probably won't buy one. I don't have enough money right now. I guess I will rent. I'll rent one. So, because the person is not sure. Are you going to go in with anyone? No, I need some time alone. I'm going to travel by myself. So, the person has decided on not to go by others. And number two here. Yes. What are your plans for the holiday weekend? I'm going to visit my parents. What are you going to do there? Nothing much. I'm going to hang out with some old school friends and we'll probably have a barbecue on Sunday. That sounds like fun. When are you going to leave? When are you going to leave? I'm not sure yet. I'll probably leave on Friday night if I don't need to work on Saturday. Are you going to fly there? I wish I could, but it's too expensive. I guess I'll take the train. Are you going to go alone? Maybe my brother will go too. He hasn't decided yet. Do you know when you're coming back? I think... I'll come back on Monday. Good. Then we can have dinner together on Monday. Okay. So this was some ideas about will and be going to. Okay. Now here says, have you thought about your next vacation? Write answers to these questions. Okay. Please pause the video now here and see these questions. Come up with some answers for them. Okay, please do it so. If you do not, I will give the answer. So, questions about how, where, when, how long, and are you going to go alone or with someone? So, I have prepared some answers to this part as your extra speaking practice. Says... I am very excited about my upcoming vacation. Upcoming future vacation. It says, <clears throat> I'm going to visit the beautiful city of Paris. I have already planned my itinerary. Itinerary. Which means my trip plan. And uh, I'm going to explore iconic landmarks iconic landmarks beautiful such as the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre Museum mm -hmm. so iconic landmarks was something very beautiful here additionally I will try authentic French cuisine real genuine and stroll along the charming streets of Montmartre 
I'm confident that this trip will be an amazing experience and I'm going to capture many memorable moments. I'm going to share my adventures with friends and family when I return, okay? So there were some beautiful points here, for example, explore, explore iconic landmarks. That is beautiful. Transfer that into your vocabulary notebook. Additionally, instead of saying and, and, authentic French cuisine. Authentic French cuisine means real, genuine, firsthand. Stroll, walk in a calm fashion. And uh, that's it. So, you see, I am preparing these speaking samples for you in the hopes that you read them watch them over and over and then try to produce language like that this way you can improve fast okay do it please so here we talked about will and be going to talking about future with lots of examples and things and uh, let's move to exercise four word power and travel preparations a list of some vocabulary in five different categories of clothing, money, health, documents, and luggage. Luggage, which means all your suitcases and things, but you know that luggage is non-count. So, if you got two suitcases, I don't know, some other items, put all stack on each other, at the airport you say, this is my luggage. You don't say these are. My. This is my luggage. None count. So my recommendation here, pause the video and read these words for yourself so we can make sure your pronunciation for these is correct. Pause the video now and say, I will read that for you. ATM card, backpack, carry-on bag, cash, first aid kit, hiking boots, medication, money belt, passport, plane ticket, sandals, suitcase, swimsuit, travel insurance, and vaccination. Vaccination. I think there was no difficult word in this list. The only thing that could be new to you maybe is money belt. Money belt for traveling. Money belt money belt it is something like this that you wear around your waist and or maybe on your chest and uh, just safely keep your money there okay so that is money belt now if you want to put all of these words into their categories for example atm card money backpack luggage carry-on bag the bag that you carry on the airplane with yourself again luggage cash first aid kit mm, health hiking boots medication money belt passport plane ticket sandals suitcase swimsuits travel insurance and vaccination health okay i guess the words here were not very difficult but if there was any new word for you transfer that into your vocabulary notebook so i spared the rest of the time for part b what are the five most important items you need for these vacations for a beach vacation what are the five top important things you need for a rafting trip for a trip to a foreign country please pause the video choose one of these items and say for example i think the five most important items on a rafting trip are this 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 and that and then a little explain and uh, my sample response for a beach vacation <clears throat> again here we have a lot of words in categories you can transfer them into your vocabulary notebook Swimsuit and beachwear. Beachwear, maybe it's a new word for you. You need appropriate clothing for swimming and enjoying the sun. Sunscreen. It's crucial to 
it's crucial to do something it's important to do something it's necessary to do something it's crucial to protect your screen from the sun's rays towel towels are essential for drying off after a swim sunglasses protect your eyes from the bright sun with sunglasses he hat a hat provides extra shade which means like shadow and protects your head from the sun so these are the five necessary items one might need on a beach vacation what about a rafting trip do you know what a rafting trip is A rafting trip hmm? so this is a raft and uh, this activity is called rafting go rafting the verb for that so adventurous adventurous I would like to do that so for a rafting trip what do you need you need a life jacket that you see everyone is wearing here safety first a life jacket is crucial for water activities surely waterproof bag keep your belongings dry in case of splashes 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 of water or rain comfortable clothes and shoes wear clothes and shoes suitable for getting wet get wet become wet and moving comfortably okay water bottle stay hydrated during the adventurous trips so if you are on a rafting trip chances are that you might feel thirsty it depends where you are maybe that water around you is not that good for drinking so you need to stay hydrated hydrate means to have enough water in your body so stay hydrated means have enough water like this now i have talked for a long time i want to dehydrate by drinking water i dehydrated myself and snacks pack some energy boosting snacks boost boost increase energy boosting snacks for the journey the journey means for this journey that we talked about for a rafting trip so sometimes grammar helps you not to repeat some words for example a synonym for rafting trip the journey good trip to a foreign country what do you need passport surely and travel documents ensure you have your passport in any necessary travel documents money and payment methods have local currency and understand the payment methods used in this country cash is used only in that country not everyone accepts cash so you should know about it adapter for electronics very important make sure your devices can be charged in the foreign country mm -hmm. sometimes you need to go for the right adapter local map or navigation apps these days help yourself navigate around the new place and basic phrases in local language learn a few essential phrases to communicate with locals okay so here i put all of these words and ideas under relevant categories so that you might have ideas in your ielts or toefl speaking when you are asked a question this is your job to quickly come up with some ideas put them in some notes under each other and then based on your notes deliver your talk okay good luck exercise six perspectives travel advisor let's listen to these parts and see what they're gonna foreshadow for us okay let me just Page 31, page 32, exercise 6, mm -hmm. perspectives, travel advisor. 
Part A. Listen to these pieces of advice from experienced travelers. What topic is each person talking about? You must have a valid passport to travel overseas. You ought to make a copy of your passport and keep it in a secure place. Okay, so talking about documents and passport, yeah? You must have a valid passport, of course. Overseas means foreign countries. And you ought to make a copy of your passport and keep it in a secure place. Ought to means should. It means advice. Good. When you fly, you should keep important things in your carry-on bag, such as your medication and ATM card. You shouldn't pack them in your checked luggage. So here we come across two sorts of luggage. One of them is checked luggage, the one like your suitcases that go in cargo. And the other one is carry-on bag, the one that you carry with yourself on the airplane. So it says important things should be with you on your in your carry-on bag. Okay, important. Yeah, good. You should try some of the local specialties, but you'd better avoid the stalls on the street. You shouldn't drink tap water. Okay, some points regarding your eating habits. So, you should try some local specialties. Specialty means special food of a country or a city. Specialty. You'd better avoid. You'd better means you should. You'd better avoid the stalls on the street. You see? Uh, food stalls on the street are like So these are food stalls on the street maybe maybe some of them are not hygienic enough Maybe they are not clean enough. So that's why the book is suggesting I myself try to go with them because after all, you try, you go somewhere, you need to taste that place. It won't kill you. That's my idea. But you're more than welcome to go by your own idea, yeah? In most countries, you don't have to have an international driver's license, but you have to carry a license from your own country. You also need to be 21 or over. Okay, so talking about uh, driver's license... Okay, just know that driver's license comes with apostrophe S. Okay, this one. You'd better buy travel insurance before you leave your country. Okay, talking about travel insurance and the last one. You'd better keep a copy of your credit card numbers at the hotel. And you shouldn't carry a lot of cash when you go out. Okay, so you shouldn't carry a lot of cash and keep your credit card numbers at the hotel for safety. Okay, so this was the perspective here foreshadowing the grammar that we're going to have in exercise 7. Okay, so let's go and see. Do I have anything here for you? Just Oh, good point. Good point. Advice which is a noun and uh, you pronounce please advise so as a verb it is with se as a noun it is with ce this is pronounced advice this is pronounced advise advice is non-count you cannot say i have an advice for you wrong Advice, non-count. You should say a piece of advice, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have any example here for you? Here it says advice is an uncountable noun. Don't say advice is or an advice, okay? And uh, the other one is advise. Advise. Advise, which is a verb, okay? So that was the only point here I had prepared for you. And now, exercise 7, grammar focus, talking about a very useful point, models of necessity, models of suggestion. 
OK. Just look at these two sentences here. For traveling to another country. Please complete these two sentences with must or should. Which one do you suggest with a must? Looks like this one, yeah? Because it is a passport. Just... Okay, I blackened it. You must have a passport. Why? Because without that, you are not allowed to enter the country. Even you're not allowed to leave your own country. So, must have a passport. This means it is necessary. This one? Should. You should carry your camera. It means I suggest it to you. Why? Because with your camera, you can take lots of high quality photos. Maybe on your cell phone, you can do the same thing, but a camera could be something else for a professional photographer. So basically, if you just understand these two sentences, you should understand the contrast between must and should. Must means a necessity without which it is impossible. Should means my strong suggestion to you. But you can decide not to take it. Mm -hmm. What does the book say? <clears throat> Describing necessity, you must have health insurance. It means without that they, they won't let you in. You need to be 21. You have to get a passport. Must need to have to are the same in positive sentences must need to and have to are similar and they are interchangeable you can use them instead of each other must need to and have to in positive sentences in negative sentences though the story is a bit different need to and have to are the same in negative sentences just in negative sense i have a lot of other examples below and you will see how it works giving suggestions you'd better you ought to you should again all of them have got the same meanings but with different levels of strength you'd better is stronger you ought to less strong and you should less strong than the other two so you'd better avoid the stalls it means my suggestion is you do not go with the stalls on the street but if you want to do no problem do it you ought to make a copy of your passport it is not a necessity it is my good suggestion to you and you should try some local specialties again it is my suggestion Okay, and the negative is that you shouldn't carry a lot of cash on yourself. So I talked about must, need to, have to in positive way, in positive sentences. Had better, ought to, should, all of them the same with different levels of strength and shouldn't, which is not difficult. Just don't have to. I didn't talk about that. So just one example here. Here it says had to, ought to and should have similar meanings but with different levels of strength that I told you about. Here I say you must have a passport for traveling. Instead of that must I can say you need to in or you have to have a passport but what about the negative sentence for example you must not carry arms on a plane so arms means weapons you must not carry arms on a can i say you do not have to carry arms on a plane incorrect incorrect you do not have to means you can but it's not necessary for you but if you like no problem do it so here do not have to is incorrect you must not carry 
So in this case, it's not working for us. In positive sentences, all the three are the same. In negative sentences, they are not the same. For an example for have to and need to in negative case could be, for example, you don't have to carry so much cash. You don't have to carry so much cash on you. Everywhere there is an ATM or cars are accepted everywhere. You don't have to, you don't need to. Both of them carry the same meaning. Okay, so this was the point about positive and negative cases of models for necessity. Just one point, the verb following a model is in its simple form. You must, you should, you'd better do it before leaving the office. So don't say you must to do it wrong. You should to do it. You'd better to do it wrong. All of them. Are. You must do it. You should do it. You'd better do it. Okay. Simple form of the verb. Good, good, good. I hope you're not tired by now, are you? Part A. Let's do it. Choose between the models in parentheses. It says you too many clothes, you won't have. So you shouldn't pack too many clothes because you won't have enough room, which means space to bring back any gift or souvenir. You must carry identification with you. It's the law law. You It's suggestion. You ought to buy a money belt to carry your passport ATM card. It means without that, it's also possible. For example, put them in your carry-on bag. Put them in your pocket. You. So it's suggestion. You'd better make hotel reservations in advance. It might be difficult. It might be difficult. Maybe also you can. Find. Number five. You. Suggestion. You should buy a round trip ticket because it's cheaper. Yeah. And you. This one is a bit tricky. You think that it is you ought to, but no, because it says if you don't want to pay, if you don't want to pay, you have to, you must, you need to, you need to check out of most hotel rooms if you don't want to pay. So if we did not have this part, R2 would be good. But it says, if you don't want to be charged for another night, you must leave the room before noon or by noon. By means before. Okay, you got it? Good, for extra speaking practice, imagine you're gonna travel abroad here, you must take enough medication. Okay, so these are some sentences you can say. For example, take enough medication. You, you'd better, you must, depending on the trip. Take your ATM card. I guess it's, <laughs> it's must these days. You must take. You get the necessary vaccination. You must get, otherwise they won't let you in. You foreign, uh, forget to pack your camera. You shouldn't forget to pack the camera. You shouldn't forget to pack your camera. Yeah, it's advice. You have a visa. So you must have a visa. You have to have, you need to have. And you change money before you go. So it's advice. You can even go there and change. So you'd better change. You ought to change. You should change. Okay, because it says you can do it when you arrive there you should change so maybe it's better to say also you don't have to change the money because it says you can this one is also possible you don't have to okay so for senses sometimes different answers are possible good have i prepared anything for you yes yes uh-huh with models loads of examples in positive senses you have to visit the famous landmarks in the area. You have to, you must. 
it's strong suggestion. It's not that it means without that something bad would happen. This is very, very strong advice or suggestion or recommendation. You should take a guided tour to learn about the history. It means this is my good advice to you. You ought to explore the hidden gems, gems, gohar, or uh, diamonds, treasures, off the beaten path. Off the beaten path means somewhere different, means unusual, means not something everyone does. So off the beaten path. So you got to explore the hidden gems off the beaten path. Good. You must pack a sunscreen for the sunny weather. You must pack sunscreen for the sunny weather. Okay. Again, it is because the person probably this is a female talking about this because for women, it's very important to protect their screen. Maybe a man says the same thing. You should pack sunscreen, you know, uh, this is not like mathematics with just one correct answer. It sometimes depends. Sometimes you should learn a few basic phrases. And yeah, of course, you have to make reservations for popular attractions in advance. It means without that, you won't have any attraction when you arrive there. You are a you ought to try the public transportation system for a local experience. Advice. You should, you should keep a copy of important documents like your passport. Advice. You have to respect the local customs and traditions. Otherwise, maybe you even end up in jail. You don't know. So I am preparing lots of examples for you so that you learn this grammar. You must be aware of the local laws and regulations, of course. You should try to interact with the locals to learn about their culture. Mm -hmm. You'd better secure your belongings to avoid theft. Means be careful where you put your belongings. And you have to steer clear of unlicensed taxis. Okay, so it means uh, this is my strong suggestion. Maybe in a country with a high crime rate, it is have to. Maybe in another country which does not have that high crime rate, you say you should steer clear of. Mm -hmm. So it all depends, I'm telling you. Negative senses. You must not forget to purchase travel insurance. Otherwise, there would be problems for you. You have to refrain from littering. Okay, this was not a negative sentence. Sorry about that. You should not rely solely on your smartphone for navigation. Mm -hmm. It means uh, you can also use your own sense of navigation by the sun and maybe asking others. You ought not to ignore. You ought to ignore. You ought not to ignore local safety warnings okay negative of ought to of course ought to is not that commonly used but because the grammar is here i teach you you must not engage in risky activities without proper guidance mm -hmm. and you should not underestimate the importance of comfortable shoes comfortable shoes very beautiful Underestimate the importance of beautiful phrase. You must not leave your belongings unattended in crowded areas. So don't leave your belongings unattended, not watched. You must not ignore travel advisories from your government. And you should not forget to charge your electronic devices before leaving okay so <clears throat> this is some advice but in negative sentences and some extra sentences with don't have to some extra sentences with don't have to because that is also important it says you don't have to worry about cooking tonight i already prepared dinner 
you don't have to attend the meeting if you have other pressing commitments beautiful beautiful pressing commitment means some obligations that are necessary essential pressing commitments transfer that into your vocabulary notebook you don't have to rush there is plenty of time before the movie starts and you don't have to complete the entire project in one day take your time and do it thoroughly take your time and if you don't feel like going out you don't have to join us for the party we understand okay beautiful friends understanding friends so my dear viewers what did we talk about here lots and lots we talked about models of necessity we talked about models of suggestion I told you that in positive sentences all the three are the same in negative the story is different all these three are the same stronger less strong less strong okay and here I provided you ample examples okay my suggestion watch this part two times take out the beautiful words and transfer them into your vocabulary notebook okay now it's time we headed for the pronunciation linked sounds with what and yeah so these two slashes show that it is the it's not w it is what so <clears throat> this is not a very difficult listening i'm not going to bother it just says if after what and yet sound we have a vowel kind of they mixed together how you should know about you should know about local conditions or you ought to do it you ought to do it right away you ought to do it right away you shouldn't carry a lot of cash carry a carry a lot of cash and you must be at least 21 years old okay so if you pronounce fast the same thing will happen exercise 9 a pleasant trip i hope that all of you soon will have a pleasant trip wherever you'd like to let's listen to the part my dear friends 45 it is 42 43 page 34 45. exercise 9 listening a pleasant trip part a Listen to an interview with a spokeswoman from the London Visitor Center. Number the topics she discusses in the correct order from one to four. So, what do I expect you to do now? Because we are listening to this part two times. First time, non-stop. Just listen. See, it is first talking about A, B, C, or D. And have a rough imagination of this listening or a gist of the idea possibly pause the video and give a summary of that okay after that we will listen to it sentence by sentence talking about its beautiful words let's go what should people do to make their trip to london pleasant well don't try to do too much in a short time that's very important you should start planning before you get here you ought to decide in advance which sites you most want to see is it easy to get around on public transportation? Oh, yes. There are buses, trains, the metro, taxis. There are plenty of options. But you ought to go online and investigate. There are websites that will show you the best route to get where you want to go. Oh, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Even British visitors have to ask for help when they come here. You'll find that people from London are happy to help. They like welcoming visitors to their city and are willing to give directions. I see. And is London a safe city for tourists? It's safer than many cities in the world. But just like in any big city, you should still be careful. For example, don't go off on your own, especially at night. And never carry much cash on you. One last thing. Is it an expensive city to visit? 
Yes, it can be, but there are a lot of places in the city where you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you're a student, you should bring your student ID card with you. That way, you can get a discount at museums and galleries. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, just that most people have a great time when they come to London, and I'm sure you will too. Okay. In which order? The first thing they talked about, planning the trip. The second one was public transportation. The third one, safety. And the last, money. Okay. Do you have a summary of the listening in your mind you want to share? Please pause the video and do. If not, I will give a summary. So, he's asking her about some ideas or advice regarding a trip to London and she says it's best to plan the trip in advance because there are a lot of things to do and you don't need to you shouldn't rush doing too many things together after that she talks about public transportation for which there is a lot of options like metro like buses and taxis as for safety she believes that london is safer than many other cities but again you need to be careful especially at night and uh, for money she believes there is a lot of other ways to save your money especially if you're a student you need to bring your student id to get discount okay so a summary like this could be useful now let's listen to this part as it was British and could be a bit challenging for some students talking about the words is in the correct order make their trip to London pleasant okay what should people do to make their trip to London pleasant well don't try to do too much in a short time that's very important you should start planning before you get here you ought to decide in advance you ought to decide we say you ought to decide. She says you ought to decide. Which sites you most want to see. In advance. In advance means before you come. In advance. So before, before something happens. For example, um, I text my friend to borrow some money and say at the end of that for example do you have some money to lend me and things and after that i say thank you in advance and what does that mean it means uh, you haven't paid me but before you do i am thanking you so thank you in advance okay is it easy to get around on public transportation is it easy to get around see the city oh yes there are buses trains the metro taxis there are plenty of options, but you ought to go online and investigate. Mm -hmm. You ought to go online and investigate, search. There are websites that will show you the best route to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. The best route. The best way. Oh, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Even British visitors have to ask for help when they come here. Mm -hmm. You'll find that people from London are happy to help. People from London are happy to help. They like welcoming visitors to their city and are willing to give directions. They are willing to give directions. Mm -hmm. I see. And is London a safe city for tourists? It's safer than many cities in the world. But just like in any big city, you should still be careful. For example, don't go off on your own, especially at night. Don't go off on your own. On your own means... It means by yourself. Alone. And never carry much cash on you. One last thing. Is it an expensive city to visit? Yes, it can be. But there are a lot of places in the city where you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you're a student, you should bring your student ID card with you. That way, you can get a discount at museums and galleries. So you can get a discount. Get a discount. On galleries and museums. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, just that most people have a great time when they come to London, and I'm sure you will too. Okay. So that was the listening. We listened to this about London and the advice in these four areas. And now part C as extra speaking. It says, which piece of advice for London applies to your own city? Okay, so I imagine, for example, a traveler want to go to Moscow. So regarding money, public transportation, safety, and planning the trip. Some advice in these four areas, okay? Currency exchange regarding money. You can get ideas this way for planning your uh, mind, for planning your ideas and putting that in practice. For example, in writing or in your speaking. For money, a traveler to Moscow. It's important to exchange some money into Russian rubles before arriving in Moscow. Look for currency exchange offices or banks and try to familiarize yourself with the current exchange rates. Additionally, also, and have some small denominations for everyday expenses like transport and snacks. So, you know the meaning of currency, but what about denominations? Denomination here Denomination. It is the value shown on a coin, paper money, or stamp. So overall, it means some small money. For example, in the forms of coins or things for everyday expenses like transportation and snacks. So this was the advice regarding money for a traveler to Moscow. What about public transportation? Metro navigation. Moscow's metro system is extensive and efficient. So I had this friend of mine, she was living in Moscow and she said that Moscow's metro station is something, is a piece of art. You got to go and watch it. Learn some basic Russian phrases related to directions and study the metro map in advance. Most station signs are in Cyrillic, the language of Russian. So, familiarize yourself with the Cyrillic alphabet to make navigation easier. A little difficult, of course, Cyrillic. And uh, I think these days the apps uh, will help you. You don't have to go for Cyrillic in learning about that. Safety. Awareness. Stay vigilant, careful, and be aware of your surroundings, especially in crowded places. Keep an eye on your belongings and use a money belt or pouch, like a bag that you wear, to secure your valuables. Beautiful phrase. Avoid displaying expensive items openly. And the last one, planning your trip about weather. Weather consideration. Moscow experiences diverse weather, different weather, from cold winters to warm summers. Check the weather forecast for your travel dates and pack accordingly. Pack accordingly. Pack based on the information you get. Don't forget essentials like an umbrella and comfortable walking shoes. Okay, so this was my sample ideas for a traveler to Moscow in these four areas. You know, basically I am giving you these sample responses in order to encourage you to gather your ideas, categorize them, and deliver them as beautifully as this. And also you can learn from these, put them into your vocabulary notebook. Okay, <clears throat> good. What do we have here? Writing. So, have a safe trip. It's about writing an email to a visitor. Okay, so 
write an email to a visitor and let's see how we write an email so for writing me an email or a letter first you need a dear and then at the end you need regards sincerely best it depends on your familiarity with the person okay and of course the subject of your email subject i imagine that i am inviting this person to vancouver exciting sightseeing recommendations for your vancouver visit this is the subject of the letter okay so you know that the one who has written the email is the one who signs it here magic in this case me i have written it to who to ali ashraf so here i say Dear Ali Ashraf, I hope this, let me, I hope this email finds you well. I am thrilled, happy, to hear about your upcoming visit to Vancouver. It's a fantastic city with so much to offer. Here are a few must-see attractions for you to consider. Must-see like a must watch movie or a must read book so these are the attractions of vancouver stanley park <laughs> beautiful just beautiful take a leisurely stroll walk or rent a bike to explore this iconic park a very beautiful park to see capilano suspension bridge <laughs> awesome experience the thrill of walking across a suspension bridge and granville island discover local art delicious food and unique shops at this vibrant public market vibrant alive and beautiful and also vancouver art gallery immerse yourself means to surround yourself with something so much so immerse yourself in canadian and indigenous art i hope you have a wonderful time exploring these attractions safe travels and i can't wait to see you here best magic so just for you to know this was the subject of the writing this was the person who receives the email or the letter this is the body of the email and here a final comment and then the one who has written it signing it okay so this was how you can write in email or a letter which could be really handy these days for lots of people yeah exercise 11 and discussion so we had a lot of speaking samples today and this one is again another one around the world it says you just won a free 30-day trip around the world discuss the following questions when will you leave which direction where will you stop how will you get there and how long will you stay in this place okay these uh, points about a 30 day trip so you know that we don't say 30 days trip it is a hyphenated adjective for that a 30 day trip like for example you say a five year old boy a five year old boy the boy is five years old but it is a five-year-old boy or a two-story building a building that has two stories okay good now the answer to this part i have prepared a sample response for this part i plan to leave next month and return a month later i will head east so I imagine that, for example, from uh, the Americas, I mean in this continent, whether America or uh, South America or Canada, I imagine from here the person is going. I'll head east 
head as a verb means go. I go east. Stopping in vibrant cities like Paris, Rome, and Delhi, India. Choosing east lets me experience diverse cultures and time zones. I'll use a mix of flights and trains for transportation. Enjoying the scenic journey. Scenic means very beautiful scenery. Each stop will be around five to seven days to soak in the local atmosphere. Soak like immerse that we had. Soak. Okay, so not a very long answer, but something manageable. My suggestion, you also give these responses. If you just watch this video clip in the hopes that you will learn speaking, no. You need to pause the video and speak for yourself. Good. In part B, what do you need to do before you go? For example, in the area of, of shopping, packing, document, let's see what I have here. Uh -huh. Before departing, which means before going, I need to shop for travel essentials, pack light and versatile clothing, organize necessary documents like passports and visas, ensure enough local currency, we talked about it, like rubles, make reservations for accommodations, and check and update vacations for a worry-free adventure. A worry-free adventure, a worry-free trip. It was a beautiful uh, chunk, yeah? Okay, so you got it? These were my sample responses. Uh, my suggestion, read these parts several times, watch the video, and give your own speaking responses for these parts, okay? And looks like mm, this is the end of the story for today. Exercise 12, reading, talking about adventure vacations. So here, as you see in the picture, three adventure vacations. This one seems to be in dense jungles. This one may be in de desert coming to the sea. I don't know. And this one looks like the Arctic area, North Pole. Okay, so let's read and see what it is. Adventure vacations. And the words related to adventure could be travel, adventure, danger, forest, snowshoes, survival skills. So when you put the words in categories in your vocabulary notebook, there is a higher chance that you remember them at the time of speaking or writing, at the time of language production. So I am reading the reading for you. It's not going to be a very difficult reading, but a good vacation for many people means comfortable accommodations, a great atmosphere, and tasty food. It's a pleasant, relaxing experience, but for some, this type of vacation just isn't enough. In today's world, many of us have safe, sometimes boring lives. We work, sleep, eat, and watch TV. So, more and more people are looking for adventure. They want excitement and danger. They might even want to feel a little afraid. Okay, so introduction is setting the scene for us. Paragraph A. How about staying on a desert island in the middle of the Indian Ocean? If you want, you can spend your whole vacation completely alone. You'll sleep in a tent and go fishing for the food, for your food. Your only company will be the monkeys and lizards. So company here means Someone who is with you, someone who is alongside you. Mm -hmm. For example, if you want to have a pleasant trip, you should have some good company along. Company means people coming with you. So company, monkey and lizards. But don't worry, if you get bored, 
get port. Just call the travel company and they'll send a boat to pick you up. Pick you up, okay? I think it didn't have that much of a difficult word for us. Part B, or how about spending a week in the sub-zero temperatures? Sub means below. Sub-zero means below zero. Temperatures of the north. You will fly to the Arctic. Arctic, which is the North Pole. And Antarctica, South Pole. And, and the local Sami people will teach you to survive in this very difficult environment. You will learn how to keep yourself warm and make special snowshoes. You can also go ice fishing, like breaking the ice and then fishing. And look after reindeer, like the deer in North Pole. Uh, I will show you a picture of that. You will even learn how to tell when it's going to snow. Mm -hmm. So you can also learn even when it is going to snow. Reindeer. What is it? This is reindeer, like deer. Okay, <clears throat> and part C. But if the Arctic's too cold, you could try the heat of the jungle instead. Heat, noun and verb. Here it is a noun. Hot adjective, heat, noun. Deep in the Amazon rainforest, you will sleep in the open air. Dangerous. At first, you will spend a week with local guides. They will train you or teach you to do many things like find food and water or light fires with stones light as a verb light fire make fire they will even teach you to pick the tastiest insect for dinner <laughs> then you'll spend a week by yourself alone with no tent no extra clothing, uh, clothes, and no cell phone. You will be completely alone, except for the crocodiles and snakes, of course. Okay, so this part could be a bit dangerous. The Amazon rainforest, okay? So this was the three readings that we did. Okay, the Amazon rainforest, the island in the middle of the ocean and this one the arctic region okay so <clears throat> there is x size b here please do it yourself it's not that difficult or part c also not difficult but the summary of the reading i have provided this is going to be useful for you before you see this summary my suggestion you watch the reading that i read one more time organize a summary in your mind and give it yourself if you want to have some practice for yourself if not watch the summary that i have prepared the test discusses the changing preferences of vacationers vacationers people who take vacations with many many people seeking adventure and excitement instead of traditional comforts in contrast, it contrasts typical relaxing vacations with more adventurous options, such as staying alone on a desert island, surviving in the Arctic with the Sami people, or experimenting the challenges of the Amazon rainforest. The narrative, the writer, the author, highlights the desire for unique challenging experiences ranging from solitude in nature, being alone, to learning survival skills in the extreme environments. Extreme environments could be a synonym for Amazon rainforest. Solitude means being alone, like the book 100 Years of Solitude. And desire 
interest or like and this was a summary of that reading okay and part d which of these three vacations would you be prepared to try which ones you would refuse why please pause the video and give a sample response for the one you like for the one you don't like and my sample response I would be prepared to try option A, staying on a desert island in the Indian Ocean. The idea of solitude and simple living appeals to me, means I like it. And the option to call for assistance ensures safety. So whenever you feel bored, you can call for safety. That option ensures safety. A short and beautiful sample response. What about that one I don't like? I would refuse option C. Why? Staying alone in the Amazon rainforest. The lack of a tent, extra clothes, and a cell phone in an environment with potential dangers like crocodiles and snakes seems too risky for my comfort. Too risky. It means it's very risky that I cannot take. I prefer adventures with a balanced excitement, a balance of excitement and reasonable safety precautions. A very beautiful final sentence. I prefer adventures with a balance of excitement, a balance of something, a balance of excitement and reasonable safety precautions. Okay, so this was the reading in the answer to the parts and looks like we are done for this session okay so next session we will go to unit six okay that's good but as a summary of the session that we worked together today today we talked about travel adventure vacations and here we talked about different options to do on a vacation the conversation which was not very difficult in the grammar part i told you about be going to and will be going to the time that you have plans will the time that you do not have that much plan both of them talking about future word power and some vocabulary related to travel perspectives uh, preparing your mind to talk about the grammar focus, models for necessity, models for suggestion. I told you that must, need to, and have to are the same, interchangeable when they are positive, but in negative, just need to and have to are the same. And for suggestions, all the three are the same, but just they lose their strength as you come down, okay? And here I provided you with ample examples in the listening we had this beautiful talk about london with its beautiful words writing writing an email the discussion that we had about the 30-day trip and the reading that we just finished and what about the summary in the word file there is lots of words here we had today so the speaking practice, I recommend you go and do these parts for yourself. Deepening my understanding of, beautiful. Broaden my horizons, beautiful. Create a lasting memory or create lasting memories for photography. Okay, here, list of the activities that you would like to do on a vacation. Very beautiful for organizing your mind in speaking of IELTS exam or TOEFL. In the conversation, yeah, nothing. Will and be going to, I told you about that. Iconic landmark, beautiful. Authentic French cuisine, beautiful. Here again, more vocabulary about trips and things. We had them, advice, advice, I told you about them. Grammar focus talking about um, <clears throat> must, should, and their counterparts that we talked about i just told you that they are followed by a simple form not by two or anything like that here and uh, again off the beaten path 
off the beaten path we talked about it doing th things unusual and under underestimate the importance of something beautiful pressing commitments pressing commitments beautiful thank you in advance we talked about it okay and advice for moscow in these areas that we talked about secure your valuables keep them safe pack accordingly means based on this scenario i gave you you should pack and in the writing we wrote must see attractions we talked about it in the discussion in the speaking about scenic journey which was beautiful a worry-free adventure a worry-free adventure and in the reading which did not have that many vocabulary for us appeal to me means i like it a balance of something and that's all okay and final comments my friends i hope that you have enjoyed this video if you liked it please share it with your friends and invite them to come and watch these video clips as i'm sure if you put time quality time and if you speak the parts that i give you the chance to your speaking will surely improve okay in case you still haven't subscribed please kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell i hope you have a brilliant day ahead of yourself and see you soon with another video clip Okay, take good care and bye.